Hi, I'm Marilyn Wolf. This is Computers as Components, Chapter 1, GPS Moving Map, map Example. So we're going to use the design of a, a GPS moving map system as a very simple introduction to design methodology. You, you're familiar with these things, you know what they do, and so that makes it easier to understand some of the steps in the design. So, um, your moving map gets your position from GPS and has a screen and basically puts you in the middle and then draws um, the roads and other uh, things around you on the screen based upon your position. The information on the roads comes from a database that it stores locally. Now, um, in computers as components, we use a simple form to capture some basic requirements of, of any system that we design. Let's go through the pieces. Uh, the name, just a very simple name so we all know what we're talking about. Uh, the purpose, what does this thing do in, in simple terms? What are its major inputs? What are its major outputs? And then what functions does the system perform to take the inputs and generate the outputs? What are its performance characteristics? Its deadlines, its sort of soft performance manufacturing cost, power and energy consumption, and also physical size and weight. So now let's go through these for our moving map. Uh, functionality. We're going to design this for automotive use. You can design moving maps for hiking, for, for boating. This is going to be for automotive use. We want to show roads and uh, major landmarks. User interface I picked 400 by 600 pixel screen. The, the exact size is not as important, but let's give an idea of how much resolution the screen has. Um, for one thing, that affects the manufacturing cost. We're going to have at most three buttons on the interface and a simple pop-up menu. Uh, we want the system to be fast enough that the scrolling of the map is relatively smooth. should take one second to power up and come on. Um, and it should lock into the GPS signal within 15 seconds. So um, there's a loose relationship between the manufacturing cost and the and the sales price. Um, so if we want a hundred twenty dollars uh, sales price, uh, that means that the manufacturing cost, which is also called the cost of goods sold, should be about one quarter or one fifth of the sales price. So let's say. $25, $30 manufacturing cost. Physical size and weight fit in hand, you know, not be too heavy. A power consumption should run for eight hours on four AA batteries. So you can see that these characteristics are not extremely specific, but they do give you an idea of what this product should, should um, look like when it's done. So now we can fill this into our requirements form. And you can see that it's a very simple form with very simple information, but this gives you good information for the next step, which is specification. Okay? We want to describe what the system is supposed to do without nailing down too many details of the architecture. Um, so that the architecture team knows what they need to do, but you don't you're not dictating um, too many of the low-level details. The specification can, can include both functional input-output relationships and non-functional elements. Um, and there are a lot of ways to describe an ex, uh, a specification. It could be in a, in a plain language, English language description. Um, could be in an executable form. In some cases, for more sophisticated designs, you may use a more mathematical um, specification of the system. So what does a specification for a GPS system uh, need to include? We're not going to go through all the details here, but let's just think about what should be in it. We need to know what information comes in from the GPS system, because GPS is a standard system. We just need to understand um, the details of that information. We need some information about map data. Once again, we're probably not going to make our own maps for all the roads in the world, we're going to buy those from somewhere. So what are the characteristics of that map database? Uh, we need to design the user interface, what the, what the buttons are and what they do. We need to specify the operations that are behind those buttons, 
what what the system has to do to perform the movie map function and part of that is defining the background operations right remember that the GPS is always running and always keeping track of where you are and that means the screen needs to be updated all the time too even when the user does not push a button okay so um, we need to think about the major components that go into the specification and that includes both hardware components like the CPU and the peripherals and also software components the major pieces of software that this system needs to do um, and the architecture um, is going to have a big uh, component of the functional behavior of the system but it also needs to worry about non-functional specifications such as you know how fast does, does the screen need to be updated so here's a simple description of the um, um, system in block diagram form. We've got a GPS receiver here. We've got the display at the other end. Okay? So we have a database that holds all the map information. And a search engine takes information on your position from GPS, searches through the database, and figures out what needs to go on the screen. There's a rendering device that then actually draws the map and uh, all the information on the screen and of course there's a user interface and that may need to draw some things on the screen too for instance button requests resp responses to buttons and so forth so if we look at the hardware architecture fairly uh, generic system where we've got a CPU connected to a bus we've got a GPS receiver we've got some IO devices for the panel um, we've got a display, the frame buffer is the memory for the display, and then we've got some general memory here. If we think about the software architecture, position is going to come in to the database search engine, which talks to the renderer, which puts out pixels to draw on the screen. There's a timer, which also connects to the user interface, so that the um, uh, you know um, how long you're taking to respond to button pushes, maybe going back, um, if the user hasn't pushed a button in a certain amount of time, maybe going back to the old display, something like that. Okay. So now that um, once we have finished our architecture design, we need to go uh, build the components, both the hardware and the software components. We may buy our hardware platform from somebody else, um, in which case we need to find it. We may also design uh, put it together ourselves from existing chips, other components that we need, right? Um, software components, same thing. We may buy some software components uh, or get them from open source collections. We may get operating systems from open source. We may get user interfaces from open source. But some of the software we may design ourselves, okay? And we have to make sure that all the pieces work together. System integration. We design these pieces. We have to put them together and make sure the entire system works. Okay, and this is where you're going to find a lot of bugs. Even if you think you've debugged all the components very thoroughly, you'll often find a lot of bugs when you connect up the pieces. So you have to design the system so that you can debug it when all these pieces are together. You can see what's going on in the different pieces of software in the hardware platform and uh, get the information you need to figure out how to fix problems. So, um, we uh, talked about a top-down design approach to this GPS moving map. We looked at the requirements, both the specifications, um, then, then um, talked about how to build a software and hardware architectures, then design components, and then finally integrate the components in the system and make sure everything works.